next lesson in national accounting is to learn gross domestic product, gross national income, and then gross national disposable income, and then national savings. In the previous lesson, the, in the first lesson of national accounting, I taught you how to reach gross domestic product in all three methods, in all three approaches. Output method, income method, and expenditure method. Today, I'm going to convert that gross domestic product into gross national income, and then gross national income into gross national disposable income, and then uh, identify the national savings, which will um, cover a huge area in national accounting. Of course, uh, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to answer the structured question in 2020 paper. All right. So let's identify what is gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, domestic, within the economic territory, within the uh, yeah product. What do you mean by product? First of all, goods and services. Product refers to goods and services. Domestic, within the economic territory. What is this economic territory? It is the area, uh, territorial boundary, which is um, governed by a, a specific government, where, uh, where the factors of production, goods and services, and people, where are the factors of production, uh, goods and services, and people can uh, freely move. Well, uh, of course, uh, it does not consist of the only the land space, land area, uh, land area plus uh, uh, territorial water, air space, uh, and so on, uh, belong to this economic territory. Then, uh, so, what is gross domestic product? Goods and services produced within the economic territory by residential firms, residential institutions. And we have to identify what is residential. Resident, residency. Residential firms means, residential institutions means, uh, the institutions which are operating within the economic territory for uh, more than one year for more than one year it is not a legal requirement as long as those uh, institutions those uh, institutions are operating within the economic territory for more than one year they are taken as residential institutions residential firms then uh, with within the given year with the factors of production both domestic and foreign right uh, you know, there are Chinese people working here in Sri Lanka for more than one year. Uh, those factors of production are foreign factors of production. They are also within the gross domestic product. And uh, even Miki Arthur, Sri Lankan cricket coach, is working with the Sri Lankan cricket board. So it's a foreign factor, but contributing to residential firms. So it is uh, a GDP then, gross domestic product. Then we have to identify what gross national income. National income. Here, gross national income. National income. Remember the word national. It refers to uh, total primary income. Total primary income earned by residential institutions. Residential institutions. Right? By contributing to both uh, GDP and uh, overseas product. It is not only GDP, even the overseas product earned by residential uh, institution, total primary income. What do you mean by primary income? The income which is generated from a, uh, through a production process by providing factors of production, such as land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. That is primary income. The income which is earned through a production process, value addition process. Right? Then, uh, here, the, uh, when you say residential institutions here, uh, 
and contributing to overseas products especially. Mahendra Jayawardhana, Mahendra Jayawardhana working for Mumbai Indians as a cricket coach, earn an income. That uh, uh, Mumbai Indians and uh, IPL, that is not GDP of the country, Sri Lanka, of Sri Lanka. It is overseas product. But he earns that income and brings it here. Right? So that is within this uh, gross national income. That has to be within this gross national income. We call it um, primary income from abroad. Then Mahila Javaradhan working for Mumbai Indians and earning that income and bringing it here is called primary income from uh, rest of the world. Primary income from abroad. Primary income from abroad. Primary income from rest of the world. He's bringing it from abroad here. Right? So that should be added. That should be added to the gross domestic product to reach gross national income. That's the idea of gross national income. It consists not only the GDP, but also, um, you know, residen residential institutions. Mahala Jayavaratana belongs to, uh, I mean, institution here, household here. Institution means a household here in Sri Lanka. Right. Then, um, then as I said, uh, those Chinese people, or Miki uh, contributing to gross domestic product, right? And earning an income, but he brings it, uh, his home. He, he brings it his home. So it is the primary income to abroad. It is going out of our country. Primary income to rest of the world. So that is within the GDP, but that is not gross national income. So it has to be deducted. Okay? So how do you convert gross domestic product into gross national income? By adding primary income from rest of the world and deducting primary income to rest of the world. Together, you can call it net primary income from rest of the world. Net. You know the word net. This plus, this plus, minus this. Right. Okay. That's net primary income from abroad. Uh, it can be a plus figure or minus figure. It is a plus figure when primary income from abroad is greater than the primary income to abroad. In Sri Lanka, it's a minus figure at present. Because primary income to abroad is greater. Then it has to be deducted to reach gross national income. Then we have to identify the concept of gross national disposable income and national savings. You can see the word disposable, disposable, available to dispose, available to utilize, the income which is available to utilize, that is disposable income. It consists not only the gross national income, you know, gross national income is primary income earned by residential institutions, total income, within the production process. But for the disposal purpose, we, to, we get not only the primary income, but also secondary income, such as current transfers, such as donations. They are also available for us to dispose. So disposable, gross national disposable income consists of not only this primary income, that means gross national income, but also net secondary income. You can call it net current transfers from rest of the world. From rest of the world. From abroad. Right? Secondary income. It is not generated within the production process. Right? Uh, it, is, uh, it is, therefore we call it net current transfers. For example, uh, Sri Lankan workers, Sri Lankan people working in uh, South, uh, uh, South Korea. Right? For more than one year. They are working there and sending money here. Right? That, is an, that is also an income available for us to dispose. We call it a secondary income. Right? Because it's a, at, that, at, at, at that moment, it is a transfer. We call it workers' remittances. Workers' remittances. It's a transfer, current transfers. So there also you have to get the net value, like we did earlier. Right? Uh, net, um, secondary income uh, from rest of the world, Minus secondary income to rest of the world. Secondary income or uh, current transfers uh, from rest of the world minus current transfers to rest of the world. That is how you get the net value. In Sri Lanka, it's a, a plus figure because uh, current transfers or secondary income coming to Sri Lanka uh, 
uh, are greater, are greater. So that is how you receive gross national disposable income. Then uh, this is the income available to dispose on, as I said, as I said, both consumption and savings. This income available for the country to dispose, to, to be utilized, right? On both consumption, total consumption and savings. Therefore, you can say, you can calculate savings, the national savings. How? By deducting consumption from gross national disposable income. Because this is available for both, you know? When you deduct consumption, total consumption from gross national disposable income, what is uh, remaining is uh, gross national savings. So how do you calculate gross national savings? Gross national disposable income minus aggregate consumption, total consumption, which consists of both public cons private consumption and public consumption. Right. Now, let's identify it further. All right. You know, first you reach GDP, then gross national income, then gross national disposable income. Right. Then uh, now you learn uh, gross, uh, gross domestic product can be raised from three approaches. Right. One is output, then income, then expenditure. Here I will use expenditure method. Now remember the expenditure method. How do you start? With uh, final consumption, total consumption, or aggregate consumption. Right? Uh, which means private consumption and public consumption, basically. Then to that you add investment. This uh, represents uh, domestic agents. Right? Here household consumption and government consumption. Here firms investment. We call it gross domestic expenditure or gross domestic product. Right? Then uh, how do you convert gross domestic expenditure into gross domestic product? Exports minus imports. We call it net exports, export minus imports. Net exports of goods and services, goods and services, both. Then you reach gross domestic product. To that you add net primary income from abroad or rest of the world. We learned in the previous slide. Right? Then you reach gross national income. Gross national income. Then to that you add uh, net secondary income from rest of the world. To reach gross national disposable income. Right. So this is the uh, this gross national disposable income is available for both both final consumption and national savings. This gross national disposable income is available for both final consumption or aggregate consumption and national savings. So how do you reach national savings? By deducting final consumption, by removing this final consumption from gross national disposable income. So what are the components in national savings? The remainder, the rest, the rest of the components. What are the investment is national savings. Net exports, whether we are losing or gaining from uh, trade and service, national savings. Net primary income, that's about the uh, primary income uh, transactions with the rest of the world. Then net secondary income. We, all these are national savings, right? So you can call them national savings. So what are the components in national savings? Investment, net exports, net primary income from the rest of the world and net secondary income from the rest of the world. And these two, investment and net exports, these are within the gross domestic product. These components are included in gross domestic product. So they are the domestic savings therefore. These are the domestic savings. So what are the components in domestic savings? Investment and net exports. Then these are the foreign savings. Right? Foreign savings. So you can say national savings equal domestic savings plus foreign savings. Then again, you know final consumption, investment and net exports consist of gross domestic product. So you can have another equation for gross domestic product. What is that? Final consumption, consumption plus domestic savings. Final consumption plus domestic savings. Or you can say gross domestic product minus final consumption, domestic savings. You can use equations both ways. Both ways. Or every way. Don't no need to learn it by heart. Right? Many teachers uh, 
uh, ask you to learn it by heart. That is the failure with national accounting. This is a very easy lesson when you conceptualize it. Right. Then, uh, uh, then again, this, uh, yeah, these three components, look at them, net exports. That means uh, export minus imports of goods and services with the rest of the world. Right? Net exports. Then net primary income from the rest of the world, related to the rest of the world. Sri Lanka and other countries. Net secondary income, related to the rest of the world. Sri Lanka and other countries. These are the transactions which uh, occur within the given period which are related to the rest of the world. Receipts and payments. These are recorded in a particular account. These are recorded in a particular account, which is known as current account of balance of payment. We will learn balance of payment later on. So these are the three components related to the given year. Current. Current account of balance of payment. So what are the components in current account of balance of payment? Net exports, net primary income from the rest of the world, and net secondary income from the rest of the world. Right? And these two components, final consumption investment, as I said earlier, that consists of that consists of gross domestic expenditure. Or you can call it domestic demand. Expenditure made by the domestic agents, namely households, government, and uh, firms. Right? which consists of both domestically produced goods and imported goods. Right? That is gross domestic expenditure. So you can again say gross national disposable income equals gross domestic expenditure and current account balance of the BOP. Therefore, you can reach current account balance. How? By deducting gross domestic expenditure from gross national disposable income. You can reach Current account balance, how? You can mathematically see that. You can form equations based on this figure, picture. You learn, please learn logically. That's, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's economics about. It's a science. You can't learn it by heart. Then it's going to be very tough. Right? So how do you reach current account balance? Gross national disposable income minus gross domestic expenditure. That is current account balance of uh, BOP, balance of payment. Then you can reach it another way. You know, uh, all these three, investment, net exports, net primary income, net secondary income, that, is, that belongs to national savings. So from national savings, you can deduct investment. From national savings, you can deduct investment, then also you get these three, net exports, net primary income, these three. That is the current account balance of the BOP. So I gave you several equations now. So what is the other, uh, other equation for current account balance of the BOP? National savings minus investment. Then you come to uh, these three figures, uh, these three components. Okay. So, I hope you understood this process. This is really important. Actually, this was tested in 2020 paper. 2020 paper for four marks. Structure is just four marks. You can, I can calculate by looking at this. Right? Very simple. How do you reach uh, gross national income now? You can see that. With this one, you can see gross national income. Up to this point. Up to this point, gross national income, final consumption, investment, net exports, net primary income from the rest of the world. Right? Right. So, aggregate consumption, that is final consumption. Gross domestic capital formation means another word for investment. A simple tact tactic they use in the examination to test you. Right? Gross domestic capital form, that is investment. Then exports minus imports. Right? What is the value here? 40, uh, gross domestic expenditure, 14,000. Then this gap is uh, minus uh, minus thousand. Yes, because imports are greater. Right? That's the Sri Lankan way. Right? So then it's going to be thirteen thousand. Gross domestic product is thirteen thousand, and uh, then minus four thousand four hundred. So I think twelve thousand uh, six hundred. Okay, that's the uh, that's gross national income. Two marks. Right? Okay. Uh, shall we double check? Uh, up to this uh, fourteen thousand, then. Uh, uh, this gap is minus 1,000, so it's going to be 13,000. Yes, yes, correct. correct. The answer is correct. That is uh, gross national income. Then gross national savings. Look at this. How do you calculate gross national savings? Right. Uh, domestic savings and foreign savings. Means investment, net exports, net primary income, net secondary income. Direct question. Everything is there. Okay. Uh, what, are the, what are the components you write? 
net exports. That means uh, minus uh, minus thousand. Then uh, minus thousand four hundred. Yes, this is a plus balance, so it's going to be uh, minus four hundred, right? Gross national savings minus figure. Uh, plus actually, we have to add investment. I'm sorry, I forgot. Right? Investment also component of national savings. So it's going to be 3,600. Two marks. It's very simple. You can calculate even in your mind. Right? When you, when you know the concepts. Don't, wor don't worry about this thing. This is really important. So I hope you understood, uh, uh, understood the lesson. Right? So keep, uh, keep watching my videos. This is the only way I can support you now. Right? So thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe uh, my YouTube channel and uh, share these videos with your friends. My purpose is to uh, teach the students freely, right? or free of charge rather. Okay, uh, so uh, please subscribe my YouTube channel and uh, even uh, click the bell icon and even share it with your friends. Thank you and, and keep listening. Listen to the same thing several times. Then only you will understand. Otherwise you will not understand it. Alright. So first time listening is not enough. Thank you very much.